Welcome to AP Chemistry at Hanyi High School. Today we'll be looking at section 14.4, which is the third part of notes for chapter 14. And we'll be looking at integrated rate law, which deals with the change in concentration with time. Now, if you recall, yesterday we were looking at differentiated rate law. And in that particular situation, we are always looking at concentration versus uh, initial rate data. If you see concentration versus time, you know you're going to be dealing with integrated rate law. And really what you're doing with integrated rate law is we're looking for linear. That's really the key. Because in order to understand whether it's zero order, first order, or second order, what we're really doing is trying to look for which situation is going to be our uh, linear relationship. Is it the zero order, first order, second order graph that gives us linear? Now, in order to do that, what we do is we take calculus to um, take our differential rate law, and we end up deriving a separate equation. This is our integrated rate law equation. So for a first order process, what you end up with after that math is the natural log of a at any time minus the natural log of A at the beginning equals negative KT. Remember, A naught is your initial concentration, AT is the concentration at any point through the course of the reaction. Now, if you manipulate this equation just a little bit, it should look a little bit more familiar. Now, when you take a look at it in this form, this looks suspiciously like I have a term here, and that's going to equal a term here times some other term plus our y-intercept. Well, what you really have here is, for this particular substance, this would be the y equals mx plus b form of this equation. So in this form, what we really have is y equals mx plus b. So what we're really doing is saying, if we graph the natural log of a versus time and we get a linear relationship, then we know it's first order. So if the reaction is first order, when you plot the natural log of the concentration versus time, you're going to get a straight line. And the slope of that straight line, since it's downhill, would be negative k. So that's our first order relationship. Now if you take a look at a very simple first order reaction, here we've got the process between methyl isonitrile and it's being converted into acetonitrile. And it's a nice, simple first order process. When we graph concentration versus time, notice it's not linear. If it was, that would be our zero order process. We're going to talk about that later. So at this point, we haven't found our linear relationship, so we don't know if it's first or second. We can rule out zero because concentration versus time is not linear. And remember, even in this, this case, we're dealing with pressure. Pressure, moles, and concentration, all of them are interchangeable with this idea. But you'll notice when we graph the natural log versus the time, and remember, time is on our x-axis. The natural log of pressure is going to be on the y-axis. Every single process that we do, make sure you're putting the time on the x-axis and the other value is going to end up going on the y-axis. So we plot it and we end up with a linear relationship that tells us that we have a first order process. And really in the first order process, two important things. The very nature of the graph being linear tells you it's first order. And if we can find the slope of that line, that actually gives us negative slope would be the value for k. So we can establish what the order is, and we can also establish the rate constant for that reaction. Now, a second order process, it's a little bit different. This is really what we get when we integrate our second order rate law expression. So it ends up looking a little different. Notice it's not natural log, it's inverse or reciprocal. And you'll hear me say reciprocal a lot, which will make sense later, because there's an alphabetical order memory aid that we're going to end up using. So here, it's in the same form as y equals mx plus b. So if you gra uh, graph the reciprocal of the concentration versus time and you get a straight line, that tells you that you have a second order process. And in this particular case, because you're going to have an uphill sloping line, then the slope of that line would actually equal k. So in a typical second order process, like here the decomposition of NO2, um, here we have concentration versus time data. Remember, before we had concentration versus reaction, initial reaction rate, that was our differential situation. In integrated rate law, we're always going to get concentration versus time data. Now, if I graph concentration versus time, you can see here that I don't get a linear expression. So that rules out zero order. So the next thing would be, okay, what is the natural log? 
of the concentration, graph that versus time. So the second one we always look at is the natural log. So since the plot's not straight, we can rule out second order. And in that particular case, our, let me jump back here, I hit too many. This would be the natural log versus time. So here I've got natural log versus time. So remember in this particular case, we know we're seeking the um, first order relationship. Well, that wasn't linear, so we know it's not first order. So then we graph the reciprocal. In this particular case, when we graph the reciprocal, we see we finally get the linear expression. And remember, second order, it's uphill, so the slope of that line would actually equal k. So you go through that sequence. Concentration versus time, natural log versus time, and then reciprocal versus time. And whichever gives you the linear relationship tells you the order of the process, and it also shows you how to find your k value. So because it's a straight line we're doing inverse, then we know it's a second order with respect to a. Now, zero-order processes are pretty rare in the real world, but they're often occurring on the AP test, so they make you look at those type of situations. A lot of times they'll deal with hypothetical equations so you can bring up zero-order situations. Now, if a reaction is zero-order, it's the concentration of A versus time that ends up linear. So if that first graph was linear, we know it's zero-order, which basically means concentration doesn't affect rate, and therefore the slope of this line is going to equal negative k. It's going to be another downward sloping line. And fundamentally what that means is your rate is going to equal the k. Now half-life is one particular application of integrated rate law. And what you're really doing in a half-life situation is trying to simplify the math so it's easier for other people to understand that don't understand the chemistry and the mathematics behind it. Because most everybody can say, okay, half-life is how long it takes for half of it to disappear. And it went through two half-lives, so I know it's got a fourth as much. It went through basically two halves. So the whole idea of half-life calculations is to really simplify the math. And we did this in Chapter 21, which we did earlier in first semester, and because radioactive decay is a first-order rate law expression. So it follows our first order. So half-life is defined as a time required for one half of the reactant to react. Now, what we're going to do here is a simple substitution into our different integrated rate law expressions. Now, because the concentration at our half-life situation is going to be half of the original, a simple relationship we can make here is that AT at half-life is going to equal 0.5 of whatever A0 was. So that's a simple relationship we end up making and using. And basically we take that and we can substitute this idea into our first order integrated rate law. Now this doesn't look quite like we've manipulated a little bit. Remember subtraction is division in log math. So AT over a, the ln of AT over A0 equals negative 1 half K, or negative K at T1 half. So when we substitute in the 0.5a0, what we end up is solving, and we get this equation, which should look familiar. This is basically what we looked at in Chapter 21. Is a simple way, if we knew the half-life time, we could figure out the rate constant. If we knew the rate constant, we could figure out what the half-life would be. So this is a type of situation that we've used before in previous chapters. Now, at this point, I'd normally show you a Half-Life Kinetics movie. I posted this in the Document Manager site, so you can go on. It's very short, but it does a nice process of looking at Half-Life and Half-Life problems, for, which is basically a first-order uh, process. So to understand Half-Life a little bit better, go online and watch the movie. Now, if you're trying to identify, or remember I said the key is we're looking for linear. So there's a variety of things we can do with this. So if we wish to know how long a reaction must proceed to reach a certain predetermined concentration, so how long is it going to take us to get to that concentration? Well, in order to do that, we have to know what order it is. So we use the right integrated rate law equation, and then we can do that type of calculation. Uh, we can also, if we know the concentrations, find the time for the relationship. So we can construct curves that allow us to do these types of calculations. Well, in order to do that, we have to know, is it zero order, first order, or second order? Now, to determine what you're going to do is you're going to set up basically three graphs. And here's where your graphing calculator can really speed this up. I also have laptops available in class, so you can do the same thing with Excel. But I mean, there's nothing really quicker than your graphing calculator. First, you need to understand, you are going to plot the time on the x-axis always. 
every single time put your time on the x-axis so when you go to solve these that's always going to be your x-axis now what do you put on the y-axis well we've got three different orders so there's three different things we're going to put first we're going to put the concentration versus time that's always going to be our first graph second graph is going to be our natural log versus time remember this is not the log of a it's a natural log of a on the y-axis and then third we're going to do the reciprocal the concentration now there's a reason why we do it in this order and i use the term reciprocal reciprocal rather than inverse because if we set up our three graphs in this order it's going to be very specific since we're searching for linear and here's where the elegant part comes in in looking at it in that exact way concentration first Natural log second, reciprocal is going to be our third graph. Now notice C and R alphabetical order. That's why we can't use inverse for the R. The alphabetical order gets messed up. So if that's what we're looking at here, and you set up your graphs and you take a look at the three graphs, if it's your concentration graph that's linear, well, that would match up with zero order. If it was your natural log that was linear, your second one, that would match up with first order. And if it was your reciprocal that was linear, it would match up with second. So CNR, 0, 1, 2, follow the alphabetical order. It's a quick, easy way to do it. So that's really what we do to determine which order, is we take a look at a graph of the concentration versus time, natural log of concentration versus time, and reciprocal concentration versus time to see which one's linear. And once we've established that, there's other things we can do. So if your graph looks like this, it's concentration versus time that's linear. You know it's zero order, and the slope of that equals negative k. So then k would equal the negative slope. If it's your second graph that is linear, that would be your first order situation. Once again, downhill, the slope of that would be negative k, so the k would be the negative slope. And if it's your reciprocal or inverse versus time that is linear, then we know it's second order, and now k equals slope. So one, we can determine the order, and two, we can determine the k value from the slope of that linear line. Now, if we put the ideas that I've been talking about together here, this is an overview of the three processes. Zero order, it's concentration versus time that's linear. The k would equal the negative of the slope, because it was a downhill line. Our equation, our integrated rate law equation for zero order would look like this. And if we solve that for half-life, we would end up deriving this equation. Now, one of the things that was on the slide that I wanted to point out here, one of the things it mentioned about first order was the half-life equation was independent of your initial concentration. Notice in both zero and second order, A0 is in our calculation in these two. It's only in this one, the first order situation, that's independent of the original concentration. And in each case, we've got, like I said, this line would be our integrated rate law expression, um, our integrated rate law. This line would be the half-life simplification of that. This line shows the relationship between k and slope. And up here, that's what we're graphing to get linear. So that's a nice overview of the different things we're looking at here that we've talked about the last few minutes. Now, the next thing I want to do is get in and actually try one of these problems. So what we're actually looking at is problem number 44 from the book on page 619. And they give you data. It's time versus moles. Now notice it's not concentration. I said time, concentration, but moles, pressure, concentration, all those were working these graphs. So first, is this a first order or a second order? Notice I didn't even do zero order because we're, we're dealing with a realistic situation, but that's always the first thing you're going to check off in the list anyway. B is what is the rate constant, and C, what would be the half-life for this reaction? Now, if the concentration versus time was linear it would be zero order obviously that didn't happen so we got right into what's going on with the natural log and what's going on with the reciprocal well if you take a look at the graph here this would be our concentration or in this case moles versus time notice it's not a linear expression now when you're using your graphing calculator to do this typically you're looking at r squared to determine if it's a linear relationship or not remember when r squared is one you have a linear relationship the more you get away from one the less linear it is in this case you can clearly see your graph for points they're not linear so and the r square of 0.95 bears that out so moles versus time not linear it's not zero order so first we can rule out that second thing we would look at then is what would be the natural log 
versus time and what would be the inverse versus time. So you always end up with these three things. First your moles, then your natural log, and then your inverse moles. And you plot the three. Now here's what the other two graphs look like. Now notice in the bottom one here, it's kind of like the first one, and then if we really draw a best fit line, it's actually curved. It's only in this middle situation here where you've got the natural log and notice our R squared, dead on one. Notice down here, R squared, 9.47. So the one that's closest to one is going to be our linear relationship. So in this particular case, you know that it's going to be first order because it's the ln versus uh, of the concentration versus time that ends up linear and not the other situation. So in this particular case, first order. Now, the second part of this problem was once we know what order it was, in this case first order, was to look at what is the rate constant. Now remember, the value of rate constant comes from that graph that we look at. And for a first order process, it was the negative of the slope equals k. So here we're looking at negative slope is going to equal our k. So if you look at the equation for the line, and remember if you um, know where to look in your graphing calculator, you know where to look in Excel, you can get it to show the slope of the line. Y equals MX plus B, well, our intercept is going to be negative 2.3006, but our slope is negative 0.0101. So multiply that by negative 1, and we've got our K value. Now, since our original numbers dealt with really numbers in three significant digits, we're going to stick with that. And then what's the half-life? Well, remember, first order half-life expressions are like we did in chapter 21. It's 0.693 over k equals half-life. We now know k, plug that into that equation, and we get 68.6 seconds. So basically, every 68.6 seconds when this reaction occurs, half of our concentration is going to be gone. That's what half-life stands for. And that finishes up section 14.4. So we'll leave it here and talk to you tomorrow.